BiblioPixel made it quick and easy to write awesome LED animations, but PixelWeb makes it even easier to run them. Follow along to see how to install and use PixelWeb. Before we get started, please note that PixelWeb requires Python 2.7 to be installed. Python 3 is not supported at this time. If you don't have it installed or are unsure, please visit python.org downloads and follow the instructions. PixelWeb is available from the Python repository, so all you need to do is type pip install PixelWeb and hit enter. On Linux, you'll need to put sudo before the command. It should take just a few seconds for PixelWeb to download and install to your machine. Once it's done installing, all you have to do is type run-pixelweb and it will automatically load the application. Note that if you don't have BiblioPixel, BiblioPixel Animations, or PySerial installed, it will automatically install those for you first. Once the dependencies are installed, it will automatically start the UI server. Note that you may see some error loading messages. This is okay. This just means that you don't have the dependencies for a few of the animations that are built into BiblioPixel Animations. Now, open up your browser and navigate to http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. You can also get to PixelWeb from another device by replacing localhost with the IP address of the machine on which PixelWeb is running. The application will now load, and when it's complete, you should be presented with a message stating that you need to configure the output device. You'll automatically be in the output settings. First, we'll set the driver, visualizer in this case. We'll set the width to 16 pixels, and the height to 16 pixels. And then check the stay on top option so that the window does not disappear. For controller, we'll choose LED matrix. Width and height are automatically retrieved from the driver. So all we have to do now is click start. And the visualizer window will appear. Now you'll see that the animation pane is available. We click on that. And let's select Bloom to start, always our favorite. We're going to change the step amount to 6, make it run a little bit faster. Click Start. We can stop the animation. Now let's try Game of Life. Frame rate set to 30. Click Start, leave with default settings and it'll automatically run and go through the simulation. But that's a little too fast. Let's try 10 frames per second. You can see it runs a little bit slower. But I really like green cells. There you go. Let's try scroll text. Do the usual hello world. Well, hello pixel web in this case. Click start. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Text size 2. That's a 16 pixel high font. And now we're going to add it to a queue. But as you can see, you need a stop condition so that it can go to the next animation. Check until complete and then add to queue again. This time we'll give it a description. Until complete just means to run one full cycle of that animation, whatever it may be, as defined by the animation, before moving on to the next. You can now see that the queue pane shows one animation listed, and it's the scroll text animation that we just added with its description. We can go back to the animations pane and choose a new animation to add to the queue. In this case, we're going to choose Bloom again. The step back to 6, which makes it run a little bit faster. But this time, instead of until complete, we'll do 150 frames, which at 30 frames per second means 5 seconds. We'll give it a description. And now you'll see two animations in the queue. We can run that. And it'll step through both of the animations in sequence, automatically looping back to the beginning when it's done with the last. You can also save a queue by clicking on the Save icon to the right of the Saves Queues drop-down. 
You can give it a name and a description if you choose, and then click Save. Now it appears in the drop-down. Let's remove these queue items, and then reload the queue that we just saved, and you'll see they come back. You can even drag and drop to reorder the animations within the queue. Next, let's check out the click selects. Click on Add to QS, and give it a name, and click Add. Now you'll see that there's one item in the quick select pane. Let's add another. We'll choose Game of Life RGB this time. Change it to 10 frames per second. And use 100 frames total for a 10 second runtime and add that to the quick select. So now you can see both the demo queue and the new animation on the quick select pane. We have to save this before we can use it. So we'll click the save button just like with the previous queue, give it a name, and click save. Now that it's saved, you'll see the launch QS page button is active. Clicking on it will load a page with nice big buttons to easily load the cues and animations that you've previously selected. You can bookmark the URL of this quick select page for easy access later, or even accessing it on a mobile device or another computer to control your display from afar. For good measure, let's add another animation to this quick select. We'll go back to the animations page, and this time select Matrix Rain. You can start it just to see what it looks like. But that's a little too fast, we'll set it to 15 frames per second. Change the growth rate a little bit. So now there's less drops per frame. That looks good, so let's add it to the quick select. We'll give it a name, click add, and now you'll see there's three on the quick select pane. But remember, you have to save it before it will show up on the quick select page. We'll reorder them first, click Save, no need to change anything, and click the Save button. Now if we reload, you'll see it shows up right in the order that we placed it in. That's all for now. In the next video, we'll show you more advanced topics, like loading your own animations into PixelWeb. You can find more information at github.com slash maniacallabs slash pixelweb. And if you have questions, feel free to check out the Maniacal Labs forums at forum.maniacallabs.com. Thanks.